Bingo, we're back on Kamehameha Day. <laughs> we're doing Computant Part 2. Technically, this is um, continuing the conversation on Computant. And we have two representatives of the company. One, the founder, uh, who is uh, Francis Tulu, founder 30 years ago. You look remarkably young, Francis. Thank you for coming down to our show. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Appreciate it. Michael Chun, a technical guy, business, <laughs> a, what is it, a business development manager, yes. is that right? Uh -huh. Of Computant. Yeah, thank uh, you for having us again. Dave. So uh, I want to drill down a little more today, but the first thing we didn't really get to finish last time is the organizational chart of companies, Francis. Can we put that on the screen and then you can tell us, you know, what the, at least the, um, the, the horizontal view of the company through sure. that chart? Okay? Sure, sure. So uh, we have several divisions. Uh, so 30 plus years ago, we started as Computant. We started as a accounting software company. From there, we, got, we have gotten into point of sale business in 1995. Since then, we have gotten into other areas. For, for example, DataNet Pacific is the IT services wing of our business, where we do uh, cloud hosting, managed services, network securities, so on and so forth for Hawaii businesses. And over the years, we have grown our point of sale business beyond Hawaii. We expanded. Uh, That's into, your favorite thing, isn't it? Uh, I, I love, you know, taking, starting a small business and, and, and push it to the limit as far as I could, uh, I could take it yeah. without getting myself into trouble. <laughs> so uh, POS Highway, six, seven years ago, uh, we expanded in the mainland and fortunately it worked to our benefit. Uh, we sell retail point of sale systems nationwide, and we have customers all over the country. So hardware and software, or just software? Both, both hardware, software, and cloud hosting. Mm -hmm. A lot of the larger uh, retail chain, uh, the all like, is from Hawaii. All from Hawaii. And, and you know, it's wonderful to hear that because you know, there's, there's always the mm, question about uh, is Hawaii able to generate software that is exportable, that is use useful, saleable on the mainland and in Asia and so forth, and you're doing it. I like that. I think, uh, you know, if, if you put your mind to it, and then sometimes, you know, you're desperate and say, okay, I've sold to everybody in Hawaii, what else, what is next, right? <laughs> then, then you push <laughs> well, your you, limit. You have, did we cover them all on that chart? I just want to be sure we covered all your one, two, three, four, five, five things. On well, the last one is point of sale. So my question for you, Francis, is, <clears throat> How do you go from one to the other? Do you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and say, oh, we're not doing security. We have to do security. And you call up Michael in the morning and say, Michael, <laughs> it's time to do a, a pivot here. We need to do security. Get working. Is that what happens? Uh, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> but I think it is the customer. It is the market. It is the technology that drives what is, what is out there, what is needed, right? I, I think it would be foolish for me to come up with a product, either I'm behind or, or I'm out of time, right? So we have to be acute to what's happening in the business world, what technology is out there doing well, what is going away. So as an example. That's a good point, what is going away? Because we live in a world where everything moves and changes and some things go away. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, the millennial, they want uh, beautiful design, they want mobile solution, they want uh, apps, and they want cloud solutions so they can be connected no matter where they are, right? So uh, because of it, uh, we had to come to realization that we need also solutions, not just for big businesses, small businesses uh, who could uh, have a very small uh, cost of entry point. So we came up with ITAP POS. Primarily, we started with uh, the, the uh, restaurant industry, and, and we are making and they modification. Need help. The restaurant industry needs help. Absolutely. There are a lot of amateurs in the restaurant industry, and they need computer assistance, no? Absolutely, yes. Yes. Well, uh, let's talk about the technology side, Michael. <laughs> sure. We got some more slides. Can you go through them? All right. So the first one, so that was the, did you want to talk more about the history or we can move on? All right. The next slide after that. So we, we are a, not just a um, technology company, we are a solutions company, you know, meaning there has to be issues and problems that needs to exist. And for us to appropriately address that is, you know, what we do. You know, we can't just 
we have to have a direction on where to take our technology. Otherwise, it's just blindless, right? Just going, shooting out in the dark. So um, in the POS industry so far, um, we came to realize that there are some issues that we are facing because um, it's, not have, it's nothing to do with the business owners. You know, people come into the restaurant industry um, because they're, uh, most of the time they're passionate about food. They want to cook. They want to, you know, make the a old neighbor. story. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and then they pour the money and it's, a, and it's a hole in the water like a yacht into which you pour your money. <laughs> and then they fail. Right. And, and that's why I say they need help. <laughs> exactly. And it's because nobody taught, people taught them how to cook, but no one taught them how to manage a business, right? So that's where we kind of come in and um, address these issues. I know um, one of the issues that we see in a lot of POS companies is that um, they sign you up for a very long-term contract, you know, when you sign up for, they come up with a really good looking price point, but then they lock you in for three, three, 10 years, you mm -hmm. know, into their So software. you can really compete with that if you don't have a long contract. Right, right. And we're very confident in what we have. So, you know, we give them the freedom of choice. Hey, if it's not working out for us, because this is a partnership. We're not just client and, you know, we, we have to form a partnership. And if- So if they call you at three o'clock in the morning, you'll take the call? <laughs> not me. <laughs> the smarter people will take okay, the call. Okay, call. somebody will take <laughs> yes, the call. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so we make sure that, you know, we don't lock anybody into a long-term contract. And um, other- That's like Spectrum, you know. Spectrum uh, obviously has competition in the way of Hawaiian Tel in this market. The Spectrum is advertising mm -hmm. heavily, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to, uh, to say that we don't have contracts. Yeah. You can come, you can go, it's okay. Yeah, it's a very appealing argument. Right, <laughs> and I guess nobody really takes that, understands that until they get locked into a contract first and then they realize, I'm like, right. oh man, these right. long-term things aren't working right. out. Right. And then um, the second issue we saw is, um, most POS companies are huge, right? Uh, they start from the mainland and then they try to branch out in other areas, and which is good for them, but the restaurants here are left with no local support. You know, um, how many times have we tried to call tech or call something about warranty or anything and we're on that phone for a very, very long time, longer than we want to, right? And time is money. No one wants to really, um, if they're in trouble, they need help now. No one wants to be, Around sure, the they're country. full of customers, what have you. And if things aren't working right, they're losing money in real time. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, and credit card fees. So most of these um, very appealing, nice looking um, POS systems, um, ultimately they don't start off as a POS company. They're created by banks that sell. Their main objective and their main um, market is payment processing, their credit card business, you know? And because of that, um, they can sell their POS for very low affordable price, but they lock you in again to their payment mm, processing. Mm. And throughout that contract, they have the right to change the rates. So you might enter um, a contract with someone, they have really good credit card rate, but maybe a year later, they can change their mind and you know, up it and you don't have a way out, right? <clears throat> is, there, is there a competition on that, on the, the type of sensors that are used? I mean, for example, um, a few years ago, I went to Europe, and in Europe, they all they come to your table with a little gizmo about yay big, right? And, <laughs> right. and they swipe your card. The, ki the card never leaves your site, right. so you don't worry about somebody copying it in the back room or right, losing right. it. Um, and uh, I said to myself, this is great. This is great. Why don't I see this in the U.S.? Well, a little while later, you do see it in the U.S. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, there were watches. I don't know if you've seen this with a watch. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a Samsung watch, for example, I think Apple too. Mm -hmm. um, you can charge things with your watch. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. So, you know, and then, I mean, I suppose uh, it's like the Octopus uh, <laughs> uh, Metropolitan Transit System in, in Hong Kong. Um, you don't have to even touch the, the system. Right. You don't have to be near it. Yeah. It reads it uh, like an RFID reader kind of thing yeah. at, at some distance. Right. And so all you do is flash the card and presto digital. <laughs> now, when I'm a customer and I see that these more sophisticated ways of reading my card are available, I'm saying, hmm, that's pretty good. And so it's always changing. And it seems to me if you're in POS, you always have to know what, what's going on. Exactly. Right. And you may have to do a kind of, a kind of quick shift right. to catch up with whatever the, uh, the, new, the new reader uh, technology is. Yeah. Right, right, right. I, I'll give you a very, very practical um, example. 
uh, a local restaurant, very small, about 1,200 square foot, so, but very successful, very, very busy restaurant. So Michael had a meeting with them several times. And, and the approach we take is we are not a cash register company. We don't view point of sale as a cash register system. A business has many challenges. One of the challenge is how do I take customer order, communicate back to the kitchen, right, and keep track of what they are ordering. As an example, in this small restaurant that he recently signed up, they have customer coming in, sitting down, having dinner. So you need a system that can handle uh, customer service for table service, fine dining, sit down restaurants. So our solution handles that. Then the same restaurants, you have customers walk in, I would like to have this and this item, this rice, this beef to go. So you need a system that can intelligently take the order for takeout customer. Now let's move forward to today's younger generations. For example, um, I see my children. Uh, they would like to order some food and they would either go online, order it, or they have an app on their mobile phone. So they could basically dial, pay, uh, with the mobile app that is on their smartphone, Very cool. right? Mm -hmm. So this small restaurant has, we developed a mobile app for them so their customer can go to uh, Apple Store, download the app and, and, and place the order anytime from anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So even a small store now can use technology only not so long ago, only the big businesses mm -hmm. could afford to use it. Now it's an even playing field. It's an even mm -hmm. playing field. Yeah, this was a, this existed in China a few years ago. It was done with a, uh, some kind of code, Q code, what do you e call it? QSR codes. Yeah. And, and uh, you you wanted to buy a newspaper. Um, you flashed your card on that guy's code at the newsstand, and it immediately send, sends it, it transfers the money into yes. his account, and it sends him a little note saying. Uh, the money has been transferred, and then he gives you the newspaper. Right. So you you actually hasten the the, the speed of the transaction right. way fast, and the phone all with the phone. There's no other equipment involved. Nothing. Right. Right. And, and that's where it's going, you know. Right. So uh, I'm, I I think you'll see more of that, and people will, and those millennials coming up will want that, and uh, you know, they don't they, want to carry cash. No, they don't want. To they carry want cash. to order any way they want. Yeah. So would, you, would, would they tolerate, and this is really a question, would they tolerate being, having a, an account at the store, like in the Amazon Go store, an account there? It's, it's, it's forever, or at least for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. And then you walk in, you buy something, and somehow it knows you bought something, and it goes on your account, and you never even, you know, a trend, you never talk to anybody. You just pick it up and walk out, and, and you get a bill on your cell phone. Uh, is that coming? That is exactly what ITEP POS does. So I talked about you go in and dine in, the system handled that. You walk in and, and you want to order. If somebody takes your order, fine. We also have kiosk. You don't want to talk to somebody, somebody can place the order on their kiosk. Wait 10 minutes, food is ready, you leave. Okay. In addition to that, Right, you already see that everywhere. That's nothing new. You have table side ordering system. The waiter's carrying a little iPad mm -hmm. or a device and they take your order, right? Now, the new thing is besides an app or your, on your smartphone, another app is you go to a website, you place the order. The latest thing is, as you know, there's like 30 different companies doing home delivery. Yep. Guess how cumbersome it is today. So if you own a restaurant, right, and you sign up with, let's say, Uber Eats, you know, as one of the home delivery, they give you an iPad, they send the order, it shows up on your iPad, and then you have to take that and enter it into a POS system. Well, people, it takes time from their system to enter into your POS, right? And people make mistakes, right? The beautiful thing about our system is we integrate with all of those 30 delivery services. If they place the order, it automatically shows up. Brilliant. 
Mm -hmm. May I say, that's brilliant. That's what you got to do. That's what you're you ahead do. of the you're ahead of the, the pack on that. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break, Michael okay. and Francis. We're going to come back, and I want to talk about how you code this kind of thing, how you make this happen, and how modular is your code, what kind of reusable modules are you building, and how hard or easy is it to adapt it when the sensors change, when some of the fundamentals change going forward, because you're always changing. You've always got to be up. You know, if I'm your customer, I want you to change. I want you to always be looking mm -hmm. at, at the new technology. Mm -hmm. We'll take a short break. We'll come back, and then we'll drill down on that. Okay, <laughs> okay. we'll be right back. Sounds good. Very good. Aloha. I'm Dela Nyanagira, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you'd go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thank you so much. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on Think Tech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show. And it's streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunisue. Mahalo. OK, you guessed it. If you were guessing that this is the part two of the Computant story, you were right. In fact, we're calling this continuing the conversation with Computat, uh, Francis uh, Tulu and Michael Chun. Michael, let's turn to you for a minute. Sure. Uh, so this is very sophisticated what Francis was talking about, especially we have to integrate, you know, various third party companies mm -hmm. and make it all work with uh, in the delivery system. I'm very impressed with that, uh, where the restaurant owner, for example, can organize deliveries on an automated basis among a number of delivery companies, saving all kinds of headaches. And, and questions, and this is an easy solution for him, mm -hmm. and it's an easy solution for the cut. And I was saying during the break that, you know, I, I think delivery is really the, the cat's meow. It's going somewhere, because yeah. what price convenience? If I'm at home, you know, I, 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 I would sooner like to get my cell phone out while I'm watching the, the ball game, whatever, mm -hmm. right? and order something instead of, you know, getting in my car, going down there, going through a whole hassle. I can't even see what, you know, what the next play is in the ball game. Mm -hmm. This way I get to see the next play yeah. and eat well. <laughs> right, Both. yeah. It's got to be more and more popular. Time. So the question is, how do you put this together? I mean, we had on that first chart, we had like five different kinds of companies. Are you reusing code modules for that? Uh, or are you starting fresh each time? What kind of, uh, what kind of uh, language are you using in building these systems? It can't be easy um, because it's so uh, ambitious, yeah? Mm -hmm. So. If you wanted to get to kind of more of the nitty gritty detail of the software, I'm not smart enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not smart enough to explain that with details. But kind of um, coming into more of like uh, talking to the customers and more on the needs, we, we at a very young age, I learned from one of my teachers that the definition of technology to me was the whole purpose, sole purpose of technology, no matter what direction it goes, needs to make people's life easier, more convenient. If it doesn't serve that purpose. Especially the businessman. Right. And it, <laughs> but if it doesn't do that, it's not considered technology, right? It's, it's knick-knack, right? So we had to identify kind of, um, we, I know Francis kind of went over um, the different companies. It's because um, the different companies that- Can we see the chart of the five companies again? Yeah. <clears throat> The five companies, yeah, the whole reason why there is, you know, five companies in the first place is because there was a specific needs that, you know, we had to address, right? There's no point in creating all these companies if they don't serve a purpose. So when we came into ITAB, we realized that we needed a way for um, small businesses, small restaurants, like you mentioned before, to stand, with the, stand up against the big boys, right? Yeah. And we needed to make it... Um, feature rich just because it's coming from an ipad just because it's at a lower price point we didn't want people to feel like they were kind of getting less features less bang for their buck we want them to know that this is can integrate 
and it's very um, adaptable to things that are coming out in the future. We want to, if there's a new trend that we never heard of before and it's coming out, we want to be able to adapt to that. And we have a... That's for all five companies? All five companies. Because, because, you know, because, you know so the, some of those companies were early and some of them were later mm -hmm. in a timeline. Um, and, uh, you know, the question I'm really putting to you is, are you always refreshing the earlier ones? Are you putting new features on? Are you, you know, a new, a new uh, module of code comes out, a new third-party plug-in, whatever, whatever it is. We have to do both. Out. You do that. We have mm -hmm. to do both. For example, ITEP POS was ground up. It's the latest technology. New programming codes that didn't exist three years ago. So it's, it's a ground up design, right? Taking the latest and greatest technology out there. You know, five years, seven years ago, there was no, no uh, Uber delivery service, right? Amazon delivery service, right? So you have to have technology that takes advantage of the movement, technological movement that is happening in the business world. The changes in the, community, in the business world. The yeah. changes. Yeah, yeah. So in this example, we had to read, you know, design everything from ground up. But if you look at some of the system that we have had 20 years ago, right? As you know, computer hardware changes, operating system changes, everything. more processing power, right? So the existing codes that we have had for all these years, right? We have to sometimes redesign, recode, because now the computers are faster and you know, processor cheaper, right? Yeah, the storage yeah. is cheaper, right? You have to stay at the cutting edge. Exactly. You know, like yesterday, uh, my, my cell phone said, oh, you want to update your operating system? I said, yes, because I'm the kind of guy who always says yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it goes through the routine, 15 or 20 minutes, and now I have, you know, a new operating system. Can, <clears throat> now, you, can you take some of the pieces on that chart and do them remotely and say uh, to the shopkeeper or whatever, whoever, the, the business person, uh, stand by, we're, we're, up, we're updating your operator, your, we're updating your code, or do you have to go over there? Or do you have to, you know, do a complete change up on, change out on all the, all the elements? So, it, it's going to depend on the technology. Because ITB is, is, is cloud-based, meaning whether it's your business or a thousand other retailers or restaurant owners' business, it is in the cloud, we make one update while you're sleeping, right? And it updates everybody. Mm -hmm. It's no different. It's no different than your iPhone. As an example, we, we, anytime we're programming change codes, right, that we upload to the, to the cloud, next time when you turn on your iPad, right, to open your business, right, it will tell you just like your iPhone, updates are ready. Click here to update, touch mm -hmm. here to update. You do that, in a matter of minutes, you're done. Ah, see, that's really good. I mean, on, on two levels. One is obviously you're moving ahead, you know, the cutting edge. But also, um, when I see, in, this, in my case, it's Samsung. When I see Samsung do that, um, I say, good, they're watching the store. Um, you know, they got, they got new things. They're not sleeping at the switch. Mm -hmm. And it's all for my benefit, presumably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope the privacy is good. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that. <laughs> we never know. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, it, it encourages me. It, um, it gives me confidence in the yeah. system. So if you're going to have five pieces on the chart, you're doing it with all five. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Very important. Right. Okay. Absolutely. You want to go some more, more slides and explain? Uh, sure. Yeah. The next slide. After that, uh, yeah, after the um, issues one is the benefits. So this just kind of um, stating a little bit of benefits about, you know, us, right? So again, we have um, low startup cost. It can start as low as $30 a month to run your business, you know? And um, again, uh, no long-term contracts. You know, we know- That's for a small business. Oh, for everyone. Anybody that wants to use ITAP, we don't have any- So you don't, so and it could have any kind of a retail in it. Oh, yeah, you can be um, a quick service restaurant where you're just coming in, selling buying something. Selling widgets, and selling, yeah, selling crepes, whatever you want. <laughs> right, it can be a table service, it can be fine dining, you know, what, whichever um, kind of... That's got to be very competitive in this market because a lot of people are going to charge a lot more than that. That's really a mm -hmm. low price, isn't it? It, it is, but we do want to, uh, we, we stand out because we want to be fair to our customers. You know, we, we, we of, of course, as a business, is we have to make money, but at the same time, 
we're here, like I mentioned, we're here to make partnerships. We're not just a client and client relationship, right? If, you, if someone signs up for a POS, we're with them. We're there to help them solve their issues, whatever they're going through. So just throwing out a high price just for the sake of making money, you know. And so not, if they tell you at 3 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> or whatever it is, 24 by 7, <laughs> right. that, you know, there's a little something in their developing in their business and, you know, they need a little, I need uh, some, some kind of extra widget, some kind of extra w bell or whistle, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be able to either, A, bring that in from your existing inventory of um, functionality, or B, make it. You're going to make a new function if they want that. But that's going to go higher than $29.95. Yeah? So, uh, you're absolutely right. Let's say, let's say you, your neighbor opens up a little coffee shop, right? And it's a 800 square foot little store, and all they need is one POS terminal, and it's quick service, meaning you come in, you buy, you pay, you walk away. Cup right? of coffee, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, coffee. Yeah. So you, all, like, all I need is one POS terminal running on my iPad. Mm -hmm. That's twenty nine ninety five. You see a quick service? It's not, some, it, it's not you know, complicated at all. So include tips? Uh, absolutely, including tips, you know, processing credit cards. I think I've seen your stuff. Yeah, they, 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 they really I, have to, I have to say what kind of tip I want to give. Right, yeah, yeah. right. So that's quick service, one terminal. Nice, okay, I own a medium-sized restaurant, you know, 2,000 square foot, I can sit 70 people, and I want uh, maybe two or three, you know, I, iPad, iTap POS, right? terminals to take order because it's a bigger place and it's a sit down restaurants and oh i want reservation i want inventory management right mm -hmm. so then you move up to the next level and and we call it uh, advanced level right mm -hmm. and advanced level is 59.95 per terminal per terminal so the beauty of it is this if you have a small business Does that include the um, that include the uh the charges for the credit card charges, or is that for just the basic software? So it is the software. Is there other, are there credit card charges on top of that? Credit card charges typically, uh, they sign up with a bank or a merchant service yeah, yeah, provider, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And whatever the bank or the That's merchant service. That's the, between the businessman, the mm -hmm. business and, and the bank. Exactly. We only have a couple of minutes left, so I want to get a handle from you guys on, you know, POS is very important, and it's happening in this country, and it's, Grassroots business, grassroots entrepreneurship. All these people want to make a buck, sometimes very creative, but sometimes not so good at business. I mean, it's, this is really filling a huge need on a, on a, right. on a national economy. Um, what's next? I suggest, you know, you guys haven't stopped yet, and there are a lot of sensors, if you will, that you could bring into your software beyond reading a credit card. I mean, you always, you always want that. <laughs> but, but sensors, for example, in transportation, um, in, you know, facial recognition or license plate recognition. Uh, in, uh, for example, Linda Lingle had this thing about the, the I forget what she called it, the, uh, the special lane uh, mm -hmm. in the highway, and you'd pay more uh, for that lane if there was a lot of traffic on it. You know, and the processing for me doesn't sound very hard. And, mm -hmm. and really, it should be a local company if anybody's going to do that. We don't, we don't need anybody from L.A. to do that. We can do it right, right here. Mm -hmm. It's just all logic. It's that that much code, not a lot. Um, so, I mean, is there something like that in your future? Is that five company chart going to turn out to be six or seven? Can you tell us, and I won't <laughs> mention a word of it to anybody, can you tell us what your next step is, Francis? My next step right now focuses helping the local businesses thrive. We, we often forget that in any business, right, you have to manage your people. You have to manage your product, right? You have to service your customer. And then the part that most people don't, I mean, most people dread about and don't want to do is, is keeping track of all these numbers, meaning accounting. So Back office. Back office back stuff. Back office in the cloud. Back office stuff. So our system from employee clocking in, right? So you can collect what time John started and what time Julie finishes, right? We capture that data. And then if you said, I would like to integrate the HR and payroll with ITAP POS, we have that option. 
-hmm. And then in IT, you're buying inventory, you're making food, and you're selling to your customer, you're making money, collecting money, you have to pay your vendors, therefore you need accounting to pay your bills, right? What about analytics? That's my last question. That is part of the system. I, I would say that when you, when you get to you know, keeping data and expanding the accounting function, the next step is analytics, because analytics tells me how well I'm running my business. Exactly. It tells you in real time your labor cost, your food cost, mm -hmm. you know, how many customers you turn over, what, how much you sold, what's your profitability, minute by minute. And you could be anywhere in the world as long as you have a laptop or an iPad with internet service. All the analytics is available. Well, that's thrilling, at your Francis. Finger, thrilling. Mm -hmm. Thrilling, Michael. You guys are really at the cutting <laughs> edge, and I wish you well in every way. And, and uh, you're an important part of the local economy. You're the, uh, the tech industry that we always wanted to have. And you are, you know, a living example of the fact that we can export our technology and our intellectual property elsewhere. So grow, get bigger. Do Thank more. you. We want you to do that. We're with you all the way. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, sir. Francis. Great work. Michael, Thank you so same. much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>